Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are doing first, last, favorite. So this is a trend that I have definitely seen on Instagram before. I have not, I don't think, seen a video like up on YouTube, at least the people that I watch, but I've seen it all over Instagram for probably a few years now, where you basically take authors that you've read multiple books from and you talk about the very first book that you've ever read by them, the last book that you've read by them, and then what book was your favorite. So some of these will overlap, some won't. I actually have so many authors that I have read multiple books from that I'm going to be splitting this into two videos, at least currently. You will have one today. Another one will probably come out by the end of the year because I don't think I'm going to do it like right away. Um, but each video so far has 11 authors that I have read at least, I think, five books from that I wanted to talk about because I have a first book, a last book, and many, many books in between. So hopefully I have a favorite of one of them. So I'm going to jump right on in because like I said, I do have 11 authors to talk about today. So the first one, part of the reason I decided to do this video is I know I have some authors that I have read a ton of books and one of them is Cassandra Clare. I have read almost every single book that she has ever published and so the first book that I ever read from her was obviously City of Bones. I know some people might not have actually read her books in order but like if you're jumping into the Shadow Hunters world you can start at any series but this is the one that started it all. It's the very first book of the Mortal Instruments series, the start of the Shadowhunter world. This was published in like 2007 or 2008, and I did actually read it in 2008. Um, this was back before I started a Goodreads, so I don't have an exact like month or anything like that. I want to say it was around summertime. Um, and so, yeah, this was the very first book that I've ever read by her. I've actually read 25 total books, the most recent one being, so my last book, uh, The Golden Tower by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. So yes, this is a duo, two authors wrote this book, but because Cassandra Clare did write it with her, this is the one that I'm saying is the last one that I read. Um, I read this one back in November of 2023, so the end of last year, it has not been a whole year yet, um, and this is the middle grade series that they have done, um, and it's like a magic school turning those like chosen one tropes on their head. Um, I listened to these on audiobook and really, really enjoyed them. So now, picking a favorite for Cassandra Clare was a little bit hard. Obviously this was harder than like my first or last because those are more factual, whereas a favorite is more of an opinion, a feeling for me. Um, and the fact that I've read 25 books from her, yeah. Um, but the one that I went with was City of Heavenly Fire. This is the last book in the Mortal Instruments series. And I do think that's the reason I mainly went with this one. I remember being a little bit disappointed in book four and five in this series compared to books one through three because it was originally supposed to be a three book series and then have a spin-off instead but she made it a six book series but this was like her first really really chunky book that she wrote uh, and I really loved how the characters ended up like how the storyline finally took everything that happened from book one through book five and like finalized it you know what I mean I just feel like this one for me personally was a really really good conclusion to a series there were multiple other series and books and things that I could have picked but I want to say this is probably really high up there at least there's so many books that I could have picked but the way that this ended the series I really really liked it and then one other thing that I wanted to do that I have not seen the Instagram people do is talk about if I still have other books by them on my TBR. Now this could be on the physical TBR, this could be on my e-reader TBR, and so obviously I do have books by Cassandra Clare on my TBR. I actually have three books on my TBR. I do have the last book in the Last Hours series, which is Chain of Thorns, so I do need to finish that series. I also have her newest adult debut, um, the fantasy one, Swordcatcher. I'm very, very intrigued by that because mostly all I've read from her is in the Shadowhunter world, 
or the middle grade series. Um, but then speaking of the Shadowhunter world, again, I do have Secrets of Blackthorn Hall, which was a Kickstarter project. There are more books coming out as well from this Kickstarter project. Um, so I will have more Cassandra Clare books on my TBR. I need to get on to that. The next author that I want to talk about today is going to be Alyssa Cole. I have read six of Alyssa Cole's books. The first book that I read by her was A Princess in Theory. This is the first book in the Reluctant Royals series and I did read this back in June of 2020. I have since reread it for Olivia Savannah's channel. We did like a discussion on it but that was the first time I read it. So the first book that I read, the first time I read it, June of 2020. And if you really like sort of like the royalty romance, the fact that there is like a hidden princess, this kind of thing, you'll probably really enjoy these books. This one I gave like a three and a half I want to say because I did have some issues with a little bit of like the way that the romance played out but I know some people absolutely love this series. And then the last book that I read by her was Can't Escape Love. This one I read in March of 2023 and it was the second novella in this world. So there's technically three novels and two novellas in the Reluctant Royals series. You get the two novellas I think in between book two and three but when I first read this series Series, I wasn't aware of the novellas. I read book one, two, three, and then later in 2023 I ended up reading the novellas to finish out all of that. Um, these ones, like I said, are novellas following some of the side characters from the Reluctant Royals world. And then for my favorite book by Alyssa Cole, this is going to be another novella, and it's actually The AI Who Loved Me. And I read this one again back in 2023, um, and it's like a sci-fi romance because it does have an AI in the center of it. It does have our main character sort of falling in love with this AI. And I still did not give this book five stars. I have not given any Alyssa Cole a full five star rating, but I did give this one like a very high four. I thought it would have been like a perfect movie or like a TV show, sort of like in like the Black Mirror type of universe. Um, and I just thought it was very intriguing to watch that and see that sort of like sci-fi nature there was a mystery at the heart of it as well i liked it better than the royal romances that she has read so this one is my favorite from her and then speaking of the tbr i don't have any physical books on my tbr but i do have her like only is it an actually an only only non-romance book on my e-reader which is when no one is watching so that is something that i still want to try from Alyssa cole moving down to the next author on my list um you guys should know if you're on my channel i read books obviously but i don't just read novels i also read manga and comics and graphic novels so the next person that we're going to be talking about today is kieran Gillen, who is an author of comics so the first one that I have ever read by him was The Wicked and the Divine, Volume 1, The Faust Act. I've read multiple books in this world, um, but this one I read in August of 2015. So it has been a while since I started this series. Um, I have not finished the series, but I have read 11 different Karen Gillen books. So this was the first one that I read. Um, this is all about teenagers or young adults in that sort of age range who are like gods as well like every so often these gods reincarnate themselves in this sort of young adult demographic and stuff goes down from there some of these volumes have wild things going on i have not finished the series i think i said that um so it is something that i do want to finish because i got to a point where i was like i need to wait for a little bit more volumes to come out they've since come out and I just need to continue. The last book that I read by Kieran Gillen was Once and Future Volume 2 Old English. This is one that I actually read in May of 2021. So again, I need to read this. I really enjoyed the beginning of this series, especially book one, uh, because it's basically like King Arthur. And the characters that are here are trying to like prevent King Arthur from coming into our world because it's not a good thing like he's not necessarily the best person to come back like there are some very dark tones here lots of again shit goes down um, but I really really have been enjoying it especially because it brings in some of those lore aspects where if you know some of the mythology for it they come into play and I really really enjoyed that but my favorite that I think I'm gonna go with is Young Avengers. So there's actually three volumes in this series and I basically read back to back to back 
all in one day. This was back in June of 2018. Um, and I think because of the fact that it was three volumes that had like basically the whole story, um, I really enjoyed how it all started and then wrapped up. This is following Marvel characters, the Young Avengers, so they are a play off of those original Marvel characters, but this also deals with like time travel, multiverse sort of stuff, which I just really, really did enjoy. And so when you go through and like see the things that I've read personally by Kieran Gillen, um, I think this is the only series that I finished, which could be part of it, but I had a great time and could not put them down. Literally read them all in one day. So yeah, this is my favorite. And then we're going to be speaking about those TBR books. I have two books on my TBR still. They're both physical books. One of them is volume three for Once in Future, and one is the next volume, I think it's like volume five or six, something like that, of The Wicked and the Divine. Speaking of the fact that I do read comics and manga, the next person that I have on this list is Junji Ito. I definitely had to mention him here because I've read 21 things by Junji Ito. Um, and I say things because some of the books that we're talking about are collected volumes. So let's go into the first book I ever read by him, which is Gio. Um, this one has the entire series in one, which I think is two volumes potentially in this one here. So like technically, if I was reading them individually, it could have counted for two instead of one but these are the English editions and when they were really first coming out we got these really cool really I, I do really like the style of these bind up editions uh, and so yeah I feel like a lot of people either read Geo or Uzumaki first I do think I like Uzumaki a little bit better than Geo I bought them at the same time they came out around the same time but Gio is two volumes compared to like Uzumaki's like three or four, whatever it is. So I definitely read this one first. Uh, and this is about like a stench and weird things that come out of the ocean. It's weird, it's creepy, it's very traditionally Junji Ito style. It's the thing that got me into reading all of his books. So yeah, this was the first one I read back in May of 2015. And then the most recent one that I have read is Ali. This is his newest short story collection. I actually had it on pre-order. Should have came in in the end of July, but the box that I had was a completely different manga order for somebody completely different, uh, and they had to resend it to me, so it came in at the beginning of August, and I almost immediately had to read it. So I actually read this this month, uh, and this is his newest short story collection. So whereas Geo was an actual like two volume manga series where everything was like one big story, this has multiple different shorter stories, but they are still really creepy. And I love his style, like the the art style of these ones. If you don't know, it's so iconic. And there were many many stories in here that were just like, mm, mm, you know what I mean, like. I love it. I did give this one five stars, so this could have counted as one of my favorites. However, I'm going to be going with Shiver. There were actually quite a few things I could have picked. I also feel like Love Sickness and Tombs are right up there for me with Shiver and now Allie. Five out of five star short story collections. But first of all, this cover is one of his creepiest covers, I feel like. Um, but also some of the stories in here are some of the creepiest ones that I have ever seen. Um, so whenever I recommend people Junji Ito stuff, besides Uzumaki, which is like obviously a fan favorite, Shiver is like the one that I go to. I absolutely love this one. It's just like so, so creepy. Uh, and I first read this in December of 2017. Now, speaking of TBR stuff, I do not have any more Junji Ito on my TBR. I am officially caught up on all of the English translated releases. So yeah. The next author we're going to be talking about is TJ Klune. I have read five books by TJ Klune. The very first one was The Extraordinaries, which is a YA of his. Um, I read it back in May of 2020, and this is about a boy with ADHD who is like really enamored of superheroes and like wishes. He knew superheroes because in this world, they're real. And this is one that I did end up giving, I want to say, like a four star because it was my first read by TJ Klune. But I think part of it is also the writing style of it and the fact that it's more YA focused because a lot of his other books, like everything else that I've read, is adult. Uh, and so I do think 
personally this is not my favorite um, but it was the first one that I read that got me into TJ Klune. The most recent one that I have read is In the Lives of Puppets. This one came out last year and I did read it last year in July of 2023. Again I did not give this one a full five stars. It is not one of my favorites. I think out of all of his adult books this is my least favorite. It is a semi Pinocchio retelling. Um, I really liked some of the characterization and stuff that was in here. I liked the fact that you could semi see some of the Pinocchio stuff even though it wasn't like a you know scene by scene sort of retelling but for one of our characters basically being asexual and me being demisexual and liking to see that on page there was quite a bit of sexual stuff on page that was a little interesting to see um, and not necessarily in a good way because like when you have somebody identifying as being asexual and then putting them in situations that are obviously uncomfortable. It was a little bit weird. Then let's go to my favorite. This again was really really hard to pick because I have, besides those two, three other five star reads by T.J. Klune. But I did go with the first five star that I've ever given him, which was Wolf Song. I actually read this as the indie edition uh, forever ago it feels like as an ebook and I just fell in love with it. This does have another like semi unconventional writing style because of the way our main character is but the found family. The found family in this one it was amazing. I love the fact that we got to see these characters grow up because it was something that started when our characters were much younger and then we get to see them turn into like 20 somethings and that whole family aspect and friendship aspect and like pack and it was so good and now I do have three other Wolf Song books, Green Creek books. Um, those are the three TJ Klune that are on my TBR. But I really do want to do a reread of this and because I want to do a reread and I remember how much I love it, that was part of the reason I did not pick up the rest yet. Like I have them. I have them on my shelves but I haven't read them because I want to reread and then I have a feeling I'm going to probably marathon everything because I do just remember loving this so so much. Uh, I've read it the first time in February of 2021 so it is definitely overdue for a reread and then I need to I need to read those other three books I have on my shelf. Then the next author we're going to talk about is going to be Riley Sager. So the first book that I ever read by Riley Sager, which is probably quite a few people's first book because of the fact that it was his first book, is Final Girls. I read this back in October of 2019. Um, which I do believe was after this one had come out and after the second book had come out because I want to say I read them pretty close together. I got them at the same time and personally I think his writing style and stuff like that storytelling has been getting better and better so this is obviously not my favorite but the most recent one that I read by him is Survive the Night. I read this in September of 2021 so it's been a little while since I've read from him. But I actually enjoyed this more than some other people. I gave this, I think, a four, like a pretty middling four, uh, because there were some things that I really liked, some things that I was questioning on. It's not like my favorite from him, but I do think it was better than the first two books. Um, because like again I do feel like his characterization and storytelling and writing has gotten better. This one is about a girl who is like stuck in a car with someone she thinks might be a murderer. Like it's a very interesting concept. But my favorite Riley Sager is going to be Home Before Dark. This one I read in August of 2020 and I just really really fell in love with this one. I could have also said that Lock Every Door is one of my favorites because it is also up there. Those are the two that I have like full-on given five stars for him um, but in my heart of hearts I think this one is at the top whereas that one's like so so close but I just really love the aspect of like the is this actually paranormal horror or not. We're following a woman who is trying to go back and figure out what happened in her family's home after her father had died I'm pretty sure and we have two different like parts. We have like her present day currently trying to figure out what used to happen when she was there as a kid because she doesn't really remember and we also have these parts that were like written by her dad saying that the house was haunted like there was some sort of book he put out about it and I liked the fact that they came together in the way that they did so this is my favorite. Uh, now like I said I haven't read anything by him since Survive the Night which means I do have three books on my TBR by him which are you know right over here. I do have The House Across the Lake, The Only One Left, and the most recent release Middle of the Night. I need to get on that. 
The next author that we are going with is going to be V.E. Schwab. So I have read nine V.E. Schwab books. My first one was A Darker Shade of Magic. This I read in January of 2020 really enjoyed, really fell in love with. Like, I absolutely love this series. I love the fact that we have the multiverse sort of element. Like, Kel is able to go to different Londons. There's four different versions of London, and I like the magic system that comes with this. Like, I really, really love this world. Uh, and the most recent one that I have read is Bridge of Souls. This is her middle grade, the finale of her middle grade trilogy. Um, this is the Cassidy Blake one pretty sure. Yes, this one I read in September of 2023. So again, um, last year, the end of last year, and don't get me wrong, I really love this series as well. I actually gave, I think, almost every single book in this series five stars, if not every single one. This is a middle grade, but it's middle grade paranormal horror, and I think it really lends into that very well. Like, there are some very creepy, horrific parts to this story, and I probably could have picked these. However, just so people know, there are a lot of Harry Potter references in this, and um, Bridge of Souls was published in 2021. So, like, I, I do want to say we're at that sort of leeway point on, like, when I should be very critical of it. However, because of the fact that this is a middle grade and it talks about it multiple times in multiple books, I just want people to be aware. So let's get into my favorite book by V.E. Schwab, and that's going to be A Conjuring of Light. This is the finale to A Darker Shade of Magic. I absolutely love the series, like I said before. I do want to say I think book two is my least favorite of all three because book one sort of feels like it could be a standalone in this world. There is that like open-endedness of the ending, but it's not necessarily something that's like, oh my gosh, a huge cliffhanger. What am I going to do until I get the next book? So then when book two started, it started off slower because it had to like almost reintroduce whatever the conflict was going to be in that story. Um, and then we got into book three and I really, really loved book three. I love the characterization and the found family and how everything fit together. And there were some very, very high stakes in here. Again, it's like much chunkier than the other two books in the series. I read this back in February of 2020. And I am thinking I need to reread this series so I can get into the next book, like the spin-off book, The Fragile Threads of Power, because that is something that is actually on my TBR. So speaking of V.E. Schwab on my TBR, I have three books by her on my TBR. One is The Fragile Threads of Power, one is Gallant, and one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. The next author that I wanted to talk about is another comic author, and this is gonna be Kaylin Smith. The first book I ever read by Kaylin Smith is Plume. This is an author that I actually found her at a Phoenix Comic Con. Back in the day, only had Plume Volume 1 and I think Volume 2, and that was it. I have since read, including these ones, eight books by this author. I absolutely love everything she's ever done. Everything has been a five stars. This started off as a webcomic and then since then she's moved into actually like writing and illustrating and publishing everything. Um, so they're all indie but like ugh, I absolutely love them. Plume is like a western fantasy. Our main character of Vesper has this locket and this guy right here, Cork, come out of the locket and like sort of protect her. I read this in June of 2017, so I have been reading Caitlin Smith for a while. Uh, I actually have funded the new edition of Plume on Kickstarter because she has like updated some of the art into like a bind-up edition. I am so ready to get my hands on it. We've just seen recently that she's gotten the volumes in her house to ship out so, so ready. Um, the most recent ones, my last book that I've read from her is The House of Lowther. I'm a patron on Patreon for her, so I actually do get like comic updates and things. And so House of Lowther is currently ongoing on Patreon. I have funded obviously volume one on Kickstarter. Volume two on Kickstarter is current. I will leave the link down below in case you're curious. Um, but this is about our main character who goes in as a maid into this like house, like this live-in boarding house for creatures that are supernatural. Like we have vampires and Bigfoot and Mothman and werewolves and things and I have absolutely been loving it. Like I really wanna say, besides the art style being gorgeous, Kaylin Smith has phenomenal character work and relationships, both like romance relationships and friendship relationships in her stories. So I've absolutely been loving it. So like again, I think almost everything could be my favorite from her. Uh, but the one that I have picked is for goodness sake. So this is the omnibus edition. I actually have all of the individual volumes as well because I 
get all of her things <laughs> off of Kickstarter. This one I read in February of 2022 and I absolutely love it. This is about a guy who has been cursed to look like a demon because of things he has done in his past and he ends up finding this woman who's sort of like a hippie with a school bus and she is determined to make it her like life goal of like figuring out his curse and trying to f solve it and things like that and I just again love the art style love the characterization the found family I think you guys will see that this is something that I love in general I cannot recommend Kaylin Smith's work enough love it and because I am reading the House of Lowther on Patreon. I don't have anything on my TBR. I've read everything. So the next one we're going to move into is Maggie Steve Otter. I have read nine Maggie Steve Otter books. The very first one that I read is Shiver. This I read before 2012. I don't have an exact date for this because um, 2012 was when I started my Goodreads and I read this before then. This was published in 2009 so I actually want to say it was probably around then sometime. Um, yeah, this is her werewolf series and I don't know how much I would love it now because I do feel like this was very 2000s YA paranormal type of stuff coming out around the same time as like Twilight and things like that um, near the end of the Twilight series I want to say. But yeah, <laughs> It got me into Maggie Steve Otter's work, so yeah. The most recent book that I have read by her is All the Crooked Saints. I read this in October of 2017. This is one of her standalones. She doesn't do very many of those. And it was very fantastical. Not necessarily my favorite, but I really appreciated what she did with this. I actually went to an author signing for this and really had a great time listening to her talk, which was one of my favorite things. Um, so yeah. Um, and technically, I've been reading The Raven Boys more recently than 2017. But because everything that I'm currently reading this year has been a reread so far because I haven't gotten to the part where I had I had stopped um, yet, I'm going to be making The Raven Boys my favorite because I actually first read this back in September of 2013 and just never finished the series. I do remember, I think, working at Barnes & Noble when this was a thing because one of the perks, at least way back when at Barnes & Noble, was you could borrow hardcover books as long as you kept them in perfect condition and you had a certain amount of time, you had to sign them out, you had to leave the dust jacket there, you could borrow the hardcover book. And I remember borrowing Blue Lily Lily Blue at Barnes & Noble because it was one of those things where like everybody was reading this and loving it, it felt like, and so the publisher was taking forever to make a paperback of the Raven King and even Blue Lily Lily Blue. So I owned the Raven Boys and the Dream Thieves in paperback and just really really wanted it in paperback to match my series. And so I never finished the series because it was taking forever. Um, but I'm since doing a reread. The first book so far out of those three is my favorite. I just really loved how the like friendship aspect starts in here because this is like the one that introduces all the boys and blue and everything like that and so this so far is my favorite one of the series um so yeah i'm mentioning it as my favorite uh because i'm still rereading the series and i will get to the raven king i will but yeah and then because of the raven boys and not having finished it i do have two maggie steve otter books on my tbr one is the raven king and one is call down the hawk because i did get that one forever ago even though i never finished the raven boys yeah the next author I wanted to talk about is going to be C.M. Stunnish. This is an indie romance author. I have read 14 books by her. Not many of them have been books that have completed series though because some of the series that I've read from her are still ongoing. She is very much one of those indie authors that is like writing what will sell. So yes, there are some series that are still fan favorites even, but maybe not where the money is currently. Um, or she also just has so many ideas sometimes that she does sort of go back and forth between different things. She is at the point right now where she's trying to close out a lot of her series um, because of the fact that we do have quite a few series that are open. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So my first book that I ever read by this author was Groupie. I read this in April of 2017. It is a Why Choose Romance. This one is very steamy. One of the most sex driven books that I have ever read. However, it really, really works because we do have characters that have 
sort of been beaten down by their situation a little bit and so not only is it a romance and things like that but we do have a lot of really good like discussion about the hard times that they've had and so like this one had a lot of like very emotional things that I personally just really loved I've actually read the whole series twice um, I could have done more but like I, re I really do like this one um, the one that I read last the most recent one is The Forever Crew. I read this in November of 2020. This is the last book in the Adamson All Boys Academy series, and I gave this book a two. I did not like this one. This was one of those ones where they're in high school, and I actually think I gave the first book of the series like a four and a half or five. I really liked the first one. It's romance and it's high school and it's dark because there is this sort of like murder mystery thriller element to it. However, it literally just went downhill from book one for me. Um, I read this, like I said, in 2020, and something about it, I think part of it was because it was high school, but if she would have aged up the characters, even just to college age, it would have helped a whole lot because of, like, the content, the steamy sex content that was in it. Um, and then the actual discussion of the mystery and the motivations, I did not understand. I didn't. This was one of those ones that was more on her dark romance side. She does some dark romances, some bully romances. Those are not necessarily my thing. Um, and it was one that wasn't bully romance. So I was like, let me see if I can do it. And like I said, book one was great. Book three, I hated. So that was the most recent one I read from her. The one I'm going to say is my favorite. I'm going to say Pack Eben Red. Um, I don't remember much about it because of the fact that it's been forever since I've read it. I read this one in November of 2017. I did not want to pick Groupie for my favorite even though I probably could pick that whole series. Like I really really loved it. However this one again is why I choose. Um, so is the Adamson All Boys Academy. She does that a lot. Um, and this one has wolves and pack and this woman our main character is supposed to be like the new alpha of the pack and I really liked the way that some of the characters in it were not too sure about this like new relationship standard that was going to happen like it's not something that is like gung-ho from the very first and I like a little bit of like things that feel like real people and mo character motivations that I want to find out about and relationships that I really want to know about and so I read multiple books in this series um, and then she stopped writing it. <laughs> yes, this is one that she said she is going to be currently working on soon, so I know it's something that's going to be finished eventually. I've actually read the first two books own the next two books on ebook, um, but since then book five, six, and seven have not been written because it was supposed to be like one book per like main character or something like that. Um, all that is to say that I really really did love that one. If you want something that is finished by this author, and that I loved go with groupie that whole series is done um, but I have 10 books by this author on my TBR I mean I've read 14 it's one of the top authors that I've ever read um, so that is saying something but I do have 10 books on my TBR and then the last author I wanted to talk about today is Mariana Zapata I have read six books by Mariana Zapata another indie author especially with romance that I've absolutely been loving the first book that I ever read by her was The Wall of Winnipeg and Me this huge chunker of a book. I read it on ebook, so I don't know if I actually knew when I first read this exactly how big it was. I read it in April of 2016, and I feel like I sped through it. I really liked this one. I think I gave it like a four star. It does have like this sort of marriage of convenience sort of trope. Um, and like, there are some things that I feel like people have like criticized a little bit about it, um, but I understand. Not my favorite book by her. But I feel like this was like one of those things that I could not put down because it did have that sort of marriage of convenience, slow burn nature of it. Like I really do love the way she does her slow burns. So this was the first one I read. The most recent one I read was All Roads Lead Here back in January of 2024, so this year. And this one was originally an indie book, but I read the arc of the new one that was being published by like more of a traditional publishing house uh, has the new cover and everything like that I also gave this one I want to say like a four four and a half maybe not 
one of my absolute new favorites but again I really did like the found family and the slow burn like let's be friends sort of thing um, so like she does that kind of stuff really really well um, and so I, I can't really complain too much about it my favorite book by her is the one that I always say is my favorite in case anybody ever wants to know and that is going to be wait for it I read this in November of 2017 uh, and I absolutely love it. This is my favorite Mariana Zapata. I do probably need to like reread it and see. Uh, I, I do also have other books by her on my TBR. Three other ones like Luke Off with Love, Lingus, and Hands Down. Um, but this is also a sports romance. I mean, obviously, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me was football. I think Hands Down on my TBR football. I read culty, soccer. This one is baseball. Wait for it is actually baseball. It's not like our main character is in the sport, um, but she is in this like crazy situation where she has to take in her nieces, nephews, nieces and nephews. I don't remember which one it is after like a family thing. And so she's having to deal with like really heavy stuff and her neighbor like across the street or something used to be a baseball player or is coaching baseball. Again, I told you, I read it a while ago. Don't remember everything, I need to reread it. But I just absolutely loved the way that all came together. The fact that we do have these harder topics, but again, slow burn, found family, friendship, all that kind of stuff. Like those are the things that I love. Wait for it, so far, still, is my favorite Mariana Zapata. So that is going to be it. Again, like I said, I actually have 11 more authors I could do this with and so I will do this again later let me know if that's something that you would like me to do but yeah all these authors that I talked about today I read at least five books from some of them I have books on my TBR either on this one or my ebook one like these are people these are authors books that I have really been enjoying like these people I keep coming back to them for a reason um, and so yeah I just thought it'd be fun to do a first last favorite to talk about their books and so if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up to let me know subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos I do have videos coming out Tuesdays Thursdays and sometimes Saturdays so I will see you then bye